So, uh, first of all, thank you so much, uh, the organizing committee of DTPA, for inviting me to speak on this uh, topic. And I also request each of the participating members here, you know, sparing time for this session. Uh, I have a short presentation here, which I will take you through. Uh, but I will touch upon, you know, interesting topic only. I would not, you know, be theoretical about what is virtual CFO and what he does, etc. Because all of you would already know. I would only, you know, maybe touch upon uh, sections or areas where the trend is going in terms of newer services, etc. Just to enlighten all of us together. So what I will be sharing with you in this presentation is what is the opportunity in this field for all of us as members in practice? There may be some members uh, in uh, service also, uh, uh, but I'm told that most of us are in uh, practice. So I, I would be you know, addressing the members in uh, practice mostly. Uh, so what is the opportunity? Where is the opportunity? and how we can leverage this opportunity. So I will touch upon these three interesting topics only. Okay. Now, when we talk of virtual CFO, it is actually not like 100% virtual CFO. The correct you know, understanding of this term is that we serve the clients while sitting in our office but we do participate as if we are physically and virtually totally involved in their operations. So if there are, you know, meetings, et cetera, there are board meetings that need CFO presence, et cetera. There are investor committees, there are meetings with lenders, et cetera. You know, our presence may still be required. So we may not work totally virtually in such cases. We may need to have our presence in some of such situations. But yes, most of the work would be done sitting in our offices and how we can leverage this opportunity because this field in our practice area is growing fast and can be in, can be one of our premier services when we look at our total bouquet of all the services that we do for our clients. I'm starting the presentation. Okay, some interesting stats I would uh, share with you. And these are all research stats that you would find somewhere or the other in some reports or the other. 63% of the companies in India, they're willing to outsource CFO function either partially or completely, mostly partially. Uh, but the number that you see is 63%. That's the opportunity, you know, which is there. And that's where, you know, we members in practice can then cash this opportunity. How this market uh, or this service area is increasing is 23% annually this service is in demand. This is the increase annually in this service, annually in need for virtual CFO services. You see, you know, last two years have been quite good from an FDI perspective. And a lot of companies have come. Just imagine, you know, when these companies established in India, particularly backed by decent groups, they don't hire CFO immediately. They may hire CEO, they may hire CTO, et cetera, but they don't hire CFOs immediately. They wait for themselves to grow up to a certain level and then, uh, you know, they hire a full-time CFO. But still, you know, when you are attached with such a group, there are many opportunities which you can work alongside the full-time full CFO. Of course, you know, cost is also a big advantage in this area, which works in our favor is that, you know, up to like 60 to 70% of the cost is sometimes saved. It's not that we would charge for 100 rupees, we would charge 30 rupees. Is that there is a fixed cost that every company has. If they have a, you know, a big uh, finance team led by a CFO, they may not need the big finance team all through the year. They can, if, uh, they can uh, you know, engage a CFO firm like us and pay us for specific tasks and get it done. So there is a big cost saving for the companies who do not want to have fat, uh, you know, CFO and its team 
in their department. Particularly the new companies now are not doing it. And that's the trend that we'll see in this presentation as we go further. So I was talking about, you know, what are the new services that's coming up under CF? So, you know, naturally in the mind, it comes like, normally it would be like uh, maintaining books, ensuring compliances, ensuring the audit is done properly, the financial statements are correct, they reflect the true picture, et cetera. Those are the, you know, natural things that come to our mind when it comes to virtual CFO. But those services are lesser in demand right now. You know, here you see the new upcoming services. A new company which is being formed, which is led by, say, a decent group, would want you or your services in these areas. Financial planning, for example, risk management, budgeting, forecasting, helping them raise funds when needed, helping them in restructure, m and IPO support, key investors. These are the new upcoming areas, you know, where they are asking you to provide. Now, we may not have all the skill set to do all kinds of services, right? We may have our team specialized in two or three areas where we can definitely provide these services. But these are the opportunities where we need to build our capabilities in future to be able to tap this big opportunity. And I know many firms, you know, they are leveraging their strength in these areas. I met a um, I will I will keep sharing my experiences in between if that's fine. I met a a, a CA firm in Gujarat about uh, a few weeks, uh, sorry, a few months ago actually, and they have a team of about thirty to thirty five people. They're providing CFO services not only to the Indian clients, but clients overseas also. Location I tell you, UK is one of the locations where they serve. And a natural question would come that, how would we know their regulations? For these kind of services that's there on the list that is in front of you, you don't need the knowledge of the local uh, uh, regulations and laws and audit requirements. These are services like transaction support services, uh, fundraising. These are generalized services, generalized in the sense that these are same all across the globe. The processes that you follow for m &A, the processes that you follow for IPO support, these could be same all over the world. There could be, you know, uh, investor investment bankers who would be supporting fundraising, IPO support, which client would raise. But when it comes to preparing forecasted financials, when it comes to preparing for MA related documents, when it comes to preparing policies and procedures, when it comes to finance, those are same all over the world. So there's a big opportunity. So this Gujarat firm I was uh, talking about, with 25 to 30 people, I suppose they have, with two offices somewhere near Ahmedabad. They've been serving clients in UK. They've been serving clients in Middle East, at least three countries in Middle East. And they're, they're serving clients in uh, Europe. That's the you know uh, uh, perspective that we should have sitting here we can serve them and they they do travel to clients it's not that they don't travel to clients they do travel to clients serve them for important meetings etc where there are meetings with lenders or fundraisers etc they do help that but that is like five percent of their time or even less than that most of the work they get it done through their team in india sorry So this, I think most of us know what impact a virtual CFO does. Apart from cost, you know, uh, uh, customized services, uh, the enhanced capability and, and credential that, you know, we can bring to the client. Now, just imagine a small company, say with 20 CR to 50 CR of turnover, they have a CFO who has limited capacity or limited capability. We as CFO uh, service provider, as an outsourced service provider, can bring you know multiple industry experience. We can bring you know our own network of people. For example, a company is trying to raise funds. We we know we have in our network investment banker, underwriters. We know valuers, merchant bankers. So these all people you know we can bring it as a team. We'll do our task. 
but at the same time the people who associate with us will help in the full ipo process or in the full fundraising process or in the in the complete m and a transactions so that network that we have as professionals as members in practice you know no, a, a service a member in service will not have that kind of network a new perspective that members in practice can have because of their experience into different industries and multiple clients that they have served in future that a member in service may not have i'm not saying uh, they will not have but most likely you know one who has worked in automobile industry or in pharma industry generally joins the same industry when it comes to an opportunity but but when it comes to you know multiple industry experience that's where a virtual cfo can help this is what i was talking about you know sitting in india how you could serve you know um, uh, different countries uh, clients in different countries geographical restriction is not there when it comes to cfo virtual cfo services there are not only you know uh, ca firms who are doing it there are non ca uh, service providers also doing it Uh, quite well and they've been you know growing and expanding their network and i and i shared this example of uh, a gujarat ca firm they've been serving these clients for last 5 years 6 years they are like 6 year old company uh, a firm and they've been serving all over so friends when we look at this service do not restrict yourself to india only go beyond now of course we will need network to be able to you know network with a client sitting in new york of course you know you need relationships you need uh, references etc those are the ingredients but when you expand your services you have a wider range to go i will take up questions at the end of the session if that's fine right okay i will share some more interesting facts with you uh, this slide so there was a survey you know conducted by uh, deloitte and we sourced this data from there in their 2020 report 74% of the cfos are interested in outsourcing their work to a virtual cfo now cfo outsourcing work to virtual cfo you know very interesting so a company which is growing right they have multiple needs when they grow they are short of capacity they don't want to build their finance team so fast in accordance with the growth of the company they would look for virtual cfo team. and when i when i talk about virtual cfo is not that one person you know who goes there as um, uh, as cfo it's the team your entire team would work for you know the client who you are serving for virtual cfo services so you may have one senior manager or two juniors you know working for a client on a set of you know things that are assigned to you so that's that's where you know we, we should think of it's not that we being hired as cfo so we will work for them say for 5 hours a day or 6 hours a day our team will work we will guide we will act as cfo we have you know so many other clients to handle so from that perspective we should think another survey by kpmg 67% of the company cfos oh sorry ceos prefer to outsource their services to cfo so you see what what the kind of opportunity is there we're not talking about small percentage 74% 67% these are the you know survey figures which are there again 96% of the virtual cfo clients are satisfied that means they want to repeat the business again and again and give it to firms like us in terms of uh, you know these are um, growth numbers so i have put x and 3x in last 8 years only the number of virtual cfos has increased by has increased to 3 times has increased by 2x just just see what kind of you know the technology has now you know enabled us to do and provide services sitting in one location to clients globally earlier technology was not helping us we didn't have whatsapp we didn't have zoom and all those uh, technology but with technology these services are expanding now uh, friends one slide i would take on challenges you know which are faced by clients 
when it comes to safe for services and, cha and challenges which are faced by us. So what happens is, you know, from a client perspective, if we see, they are always in need of a suitable, you know, uh, CFO services company. Like in any trade, you know, you need a best service provided for you. So this is a challenge for the company, you know, how to find a good CFO services company. There are companies, you know, they have good websites, etc. They market well, etc. But you know, who could be better uh, CFO service provider than the members? Than the than the chartered accountants, than the you know members from other institutes in India, where the rigor and the training and and post qualification experience is so vast. Second is you know the on time availability issue. The client may need you know uh, certain services on time. Can we provide those services to them when they need it? Suppose they have uh, you know someone uh, uh, you know. Funding someone funding them, we need valuation reports. Can we get those valuation reports? Even if we cannot do it as CFO services provider, can we arrange it from merchant bankers quickly and provide it to them? These are issues you know which client face. A service provider, a suitable service provider, timing of the service, these are very important. Now, another thing very important, you know, when you are serving the global clients is how to safeguard the information, you know, the confidential information that you have. Now, I know many firms, you know, they have built their own servers, secured servers where information cannot be accessed or cannot be diverted from the server uh, that they maintain. Now, what it happens is all the employees, they work on virtual servers, sitting wherever, they cannot part away with the information everywhere. Can we have that kind of infrastructure where we can convince the client that your information is secured, it cannot go out of the office network, the email addresses, everything is on the server. Someone can access the information, but he cannot share the information outside of the private domain. So that kind of infrastructure, you know, sometimes we need to make to convince the client that you outsource work to us, but your information is very confidential. Challenges faced by, you know, firms like us. You know, first of all, this is the service where sales cycle is very big. You go and ask for tax audit. You go and ask for audit, etc. It's very, uh, you know, uh, very quick to uh, uh, convince the client that you have done audits of XYZ firms, and then he gives you the audit of his firm. But here, you know, convincing the clients, even Indian clients or overseas clients, they would ask you hundreds of questions. They would ask you hundreds of presentations, your credentials, website, everything. They would ask. And then they would be willing to give you, uh, you know, uh, work. But references do work in our industry. References uh, work very well. If you serve five clients, you will get references of 20 clients in a matter of two years. So this is an expandable service. But yes, we need to build some credentials in the beginning. And then you know, every, every work has a preparatory time. So there is a preparatory time, maybe one year or two years. Uh, continuous focus on this service, you serve one or two clients and then you build over it. And of course, uh, you know, uh, time and budget is of course a constraint. Uh, we have limited time. How do we serve so many clients? Clients have limited budget. How do we serve them within the limited budget? But once he tastes your service and he is, uh, you know, uh, wanting to have your service, his budget would not be constrained. That we have seen, you know, many times we ourselves have seen, I've seen among others, they have also been, you know, able to command pricing once they are able to prove their service. So budget constraint, I suppose, would be a low constraint. But yes, time, we all have limited time. We all have limited teams. Uh, of course, we can increase the team, but, you know, the team increases when we have work or the work increases when we have teams. So it's like, a, you know, uh, circular kind of thing. Okay. Uh, I told you at the beginning of the uh, this presentation, I would I would try to highlight where the opportunity lies. Now, just look at uh, point number one. When the companies lack 
a dedicated team to man manage their finances. That's where our entry point is there. Wherever you look for such companies, you know, where they, the company doesn't have dedicated team. Now, which are those companies? Mostly those are companies which are FDI funded companies or companies which are, you know, uh, established by the, by the current entrepreneurs and they want to go into newer sectors, etc. They will need, they would, they won't hire another team for another business of theirs. That's where our opportunity lies among those companies. Second, when companies need temporarily CFO support services, for example, in cases where uh, supposedly m &A is there, now internally they don't have that capability to, to support m &A transactions, to support restructuring or fundraising transactions. But you as service provider, as CFO firm, you have dealt with numerous such transactions earlier, you have a very good opportunity to work with such a client with internally such capabilities not there. There are companies which think, point number three I'm coming. There are companies which think, you know, finance is not their core function. They should not focus on uh, finance. They may hire one or two people to manage the processes, but apart from that, you know, they, they want to let it go and be managed by a professional services companies like us. That's where our opportunity is there. And I know many such companies, you know, which have outsourced their finance function, include not just auditing or accounting and those kind of things, but even, you know, uh, uh, negotiations with their bankers to get the best lending facility from the banks, uh, helping them raising funds uh, when there is an opportunity because they don't have, you know, a whole time CFO who can look at it. Uh, even in situations like uh, uh, supposedly there is an uh, ERP implementation or there is uh, uh, a need to create internal financial policies and procedures, they hire uh, services from companies or firms like us. That's where our opportunity is. Point number four, when companies are going in a rapid mode and they cannot match their finance team and they don't want to even scale up their finance team in proportion to the growth that they are having. That's where, you know, our opportunity lies. So look for such clients, you know, where existing clients, where they are growing or even newer clients where you can, you know, uh, network with uh, those companies like these, where there are big opportunities, you know, you can have it. Just imagine a single account can give you, you know, very considerable amount of revenue, just a single, single client. So that's where, you know, this opportunity is very, very exciting. Uh, I know there are so many areas for professional to grow uh, uh, these days, but uh, I would ask, you know, all the participants to see, you know, where this, this service can fit in their portfolio of services for the clients. Now, essential qualifications, you know, what, what clients look for in a virtual CFO. That, you know, one is that, of course, you know, experience matters, but multifaceted experience matters a lot. So uh, one who has experience in, say, I'm just taking a few services like valuation, due diligence, fundraising, uh, private placements, etc. Apart from you know other regular services, you know these are credentials that you would build over a period of time, and some of you may already have it. Those are things you know that you should highlight while you are conversing with a client about potential engagement. That what your experience is. You you need to build your credentials through. Uh, uh, through website, through your marketing collaterals, et cetera, et cetera, where you can showcase these services, you can showcase case studies, you know, what you have done in uh, for organizations and who are who your clients are currently and what you are doing. So, so clients do like multifaceted experience uh, when they are looking for a virtual CEO. Team, I told you uh, during this presentation, do not offer yourself only as CFO, right? You say, I will come with my team. Like, you know, uh, when a doctor moves from one hospital to another, he takes entire his team. He doesn't move alone. 
right similarly when you know uh, we are there you know offer your team services more than your services because you have 8 10 12 hours a day if you are uh, you know engaging with someone and spending like 3 to 4 hours a day or maybe like 30 hours a week is not a good use of your time build a team who could support you who could do most of the cfo work and while you are handling and managing the things and providing the whole bouquet of services with the client needs under the cfo mandate professional network as i said you know uh, we can do everything sometimes you know we are good in say uh, uh, financial planning we are good in budgeting mis reporting but maybe we are not good in fundraising right we need to have a good professional network i may not be able to do it but my friends ca firm can be able to do that thing and he has experience to do that so you have to network and you know build like as one team offer all the services to the client so they they do look for professional network and they also look for professional network outside of our domain so merchant bankers underwriters uh investment bankers they they do do look for uh, those professional networks when they engage and technology of course you know we we need to have knowledge of uh, the softwares and and the tools which are up in the market some limited knowledge of uh, sap and other uh, accounting softwares you know those do add to our credential when we are uh, going for you know pitching our work. Okay, I will skip this slide because I will I would like to share you know practical experience more. But this is self-explanatory why CAs are you know more fit. Uh, the rigor and the experience that we go through during our training and even after qualification, life is never easy for us as CAs. Every time you know we have to always pull, and the kind of curriculum and sector that we have, you know, we we as uh, chartered accountants. and members in practice and members in service also you know we have all those qualifications we can definitely you know uh, be a best fit for our cfo services i would like to share two case studies with you and these are practical case studies so a company and i'm talking now about it's not about like only small to mid size companies outsource work to cfos this is a very large company and they needed help in erp optimization mis and budgeting setting up full process around it cost optimization working capital management and they wanted to outsource this work because internally they didn't have that kind of time and also capability the virtual cfo stepped in and what he did he helped in reorganization of the entire finance and accounts team he helped in setting up processes for mis and budget reporting he helped in automation for finance and see the impact 35% time saved for the finance and accounting team the internal accounting team because of that the working capital position improved and a new budgeting system was installed they didn't have this capability in house they hired someone to bring those capabilities and have them instituted in their processes and this is a large company we are talking about another uh, probably i think the last slide uh, a leading uh, you know fmcg multinational company for some fundraising transaction or mna transaction uh, i suppose they wanted to do excel based rolling forecast that means you know what we call generally is like financial model they wanted they wanted financial model with scenario simulations variance analysis etc they, did, they didn't have that capability not every company you know hires uh, financial analysts to uh, work on things which are you know once in say two years or or once in three years they do hire services of firms like us for providing those kind of things and once they did it you know the results the impact that you see the fna team 
which Alia used to spend nine days in a month, they were spending only 3.5 days a month. The CFO time, they, 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 they did have their CFO at that time, but they still outsourced the services of the CFO apart and the CFO's time was also reduced. So this is, you know, this is the opportunity that we are looking at. And not just in India, you know, people are currently serving clients overseas from India, sitting in India, having a team in India, just going out for meetings, for discussions, etc., and coming back and doing the work, etc. This is a very big lucrative field for us. So this was my, sorry, last uh, slide. Uh, uh, so I'm happy to take question. I'm, I suppose there will be a lot of questions, you know, uh, and I'm happy to share my practical experience of how things are done, et cetera. So, so please, uh, I'm, I'm open. Yeah, Manish, can you hear me? Yes. Manish, uh, can you tell us how do we build our profile and where do we build our profile to attract clients for this virtual CFO work? Okay, uh, thanks, uh, Bharat. Uh, see, uh, there are, you know, first of all, you know, you should showcase all your capabilities through some media. Now, this media could be your good website, you know, that you have uh, for the firm. When I say good website, you just look at some good examples, you know, uh, uh, overseas. It's not that only the Indian companies are providing this CFO services. There are companies, you know, in Europe, they are also providing those services. Just look at the, the way, you know, the websites and the demonstration of services and the architectures, uh, architect of those uh, websites are and try to replicate those in some way or the other because the website is the first gateway between you and your clients, your potential clients. Secondly, you need to, you know, demonstrate through professional networks like LinkedIn and other, uh, uh, you know, uh, professional sites. You need to demonstrate your work. You need to upload your past work or what you have done. Of course, you have to hide the client uh, uh, specific work that you had done, but you prepare a case study for yourself and try to demonstrate on your professional network uh, like LinkedIn, etc. Facebook and other things don't work in such, uh, you know, uh, uh, such credentials. You need to build through, uh, you know, selected professional networks only and build a profile, good graphics, you know, of, of your profile that you have with your teams, what you have, you know, the teams. If, if you showcase only your credential, it may not work. You have to share the whole team's credential, who all are working with you. What is your team? What is your network? Which all transactions you helped in? Which companies, clients you are serving with? All this has to be demonstrated. Do we have a marketplace also for this kind of services? Uh, not successful marketplaces. Okay. It's not being posted at Fiverr or... Uh other outsourcing places? I'm not aware of that, but that doesn't work. You know, it's like you have to build your credentials one-to-one. -one. Um, it's a crowded space. There are so many companies that, that outsource uh, this thing, but you know, nobody would come to you just because you are listed somewhere and they haven't seen your work before. So you have to showcase your work, your, uh, your, your past work in some case studies form, and put it all over, you know, wherever possible, websites, your, means blogs, blog writing is extremely good. If you are writing blogs and you're sharing your views of what's happening everywhere, it's a very good way of, uh, you know, reaching out to potential clients because when they read, they think that you are a thought leader in this field and you are providing such and such services to clients, uh, it, it works very well. Right. Uh, one more question from my side. Like, uh, can you give us a five tip pointers like to crack a first client for a virtual CFO job? Okay. Hmm. How many pointers you need? Five? five pointers. Okay. So, uh, first of all, you should have a very good team. Uh, definitely. You know, you, you yourself cannot devote more than 12 hours 
uh, I don't devote more than 10 hours. So uh, there are people who, are, who work more. But yes, you, uh, you, you need to have a very strong team. Secondly, is what is seen is sold. You have to showcase your capabilities somehow, somewhere. If you're not able to showcase, then nobody would reach out to you. So have a good website, have a good LinkedIn network, have your credentials, case studies, your uh, collaterals of what your firm is, what services you do, et cetera. That's very important. Uh, and also, you know, network with people uh, like you all are sitting here. Uh, you must be networking among yourself because you may have clients who you are serving, who, who you uh, are providing certain kind of services, but you may not be able to provide all the services to those clients. Network with your uh, with your like-minded professionals and network with other professionals also outside of uh, chartered accountancy, like with members of ICI, ICSI and other professional institutes. Reach out to them and make a good network that will really help uh, you uh, get the needs. Uh, and, and because you have credentials, you will be able to get the business results. So uh, assuming that uh, we are meeting the client for the first time, he has gone through our LinkedIn profile, he has been impressed. Now, what kind of questions a client can ask us at that point of interview? What, mm -hmm. what is my interview? So, you know, generally, client would like to, you know, if you happen to get such a good face-to-face -face meeting, it's extremely likely, you know, with your it's credentials. Virtual, uh, virtual meeting. Okay. Yeah. So, so even in a virtual meeting, uh, you know, uh, from a first meeting perspective, you can still make a very good impression. Uh, generally, you know, what the client asks for is, you know, the work that you have done in the past or the areas where he is interested. So, for example, uh, fundraising support. It doesn't mean that he just needs you to introduce an investor. Uh, don't get into that kind of uh, mandate because... Uh, you know, one in 50 uh, transactions actually go through. Um, but once there is an identified investor, how you can help the company board that investor into the company. That's very important. So, so they would generally ask you uh, what, if you have done a similar work or not and for which client. So there could be mandate where you could name the clients. But there could be mandate where you could not name the clients. But that doesn't matter. If you can name the clients, you must name it. If you can't, just share, I'm serving this, 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 this kind of a company. Right. They would ask for your team. Who, are, who else is, is in your uh, team? They would ask you for your own experience, uh, where all you have worked and what sort of clients, etc. you already have. And most importantly, they would ask you if you could, if you would be able to devote this this kind of a time, if it's a, uh, you know, a kind of a repeat assignment, a retainer kind of an assignment where they need some fixed hours, and they would they would also ask you if you could deliver on time. These are very important things. I think one thing is that pricing will matter. <laughs> pricing is like thirty to forty percent of all the conversation, so you have to be smart. You should not underprice. If you are, if you have capability, you will be able to get the price that you. Right. Right. Uh, one more, one more question. Uh, just one second. Uh, like, uh, just to have an idea, like if I get an assignment in Singapore or in UK, what kind of remuneration I can expect per hour basis for a virtual CFO team? Okay. <clears throat> just question. Uh... Average. Uh, average. A, a professional fees a, a, a team can make per hour basis. So it there are uh, there are uh, you know a few variables. Yeah, one is uh, is it your time or is it your team's time? Right. Right. It's a team time. We, we call it a team time when we are talking of a team. So we'll include everyone. Yes. So so according to the experience and the capability of your team members, you would charge differently for the time spent by different team members. First of all, this is very important, right? Secondly, 
how much is your time going into it is it a complex work or is it like you know something which is of routine nature where you have to you know prepare certain reports and send it out to the clients on a monthly or repeat basis that's also a very very important aspect and also you have to look at the local geography means in singapore or say in middle east rates are lower than rates in uh, us and rates are even higher when it is in europe so you have to look at the geography also how you are charging the clients and in which geography perfect uh, one question has come like what are the blogging sites uh, platform if you can suggest any platform uh i suggest you should create your own blog okay. uh, but you can you know for some quick uh, uh, this thing uh, you can uh, uh, there are some uh, uh, sites a uh, blogs uh, investor blogs i will share it probably you know uh, separately it okay. doesn't come to me but you can like medium is one uh, m e d i u m medium is one of such blogs where you could post but but they would not just post your uh, article because you have written it it has to have you know some good content some researched uh, topics and some you know uh, views etc if it is a good article you could approach medium or things like that where you could do in fact one of the things you know that you could do is also look for you know sharing your views and ideas on um, some of the leading journals start with uh generals in india because that, that's where you know you could do it easily and once you have credentials uh from uh, uh, periodicals and generals in india you could then uh, go for uh, periodicals same uh, same periodicals like for example economic times here then you know you could go for financial times uh, in the uk but that's like a long shot i'm telling you it's not easy getting the space in financial times or economic times but but we experienced you know chartered accountants i have seen you know many of them writing good articles for uh, for uh, for these journals in fact you know our, our institute's uh, journal is also very good if we could write there also right uh, any more questions Sorry, come to impact of audit trail on such services. Ah, uh, what would be the impact of audit trail on such CFO services? Okay. Ah, uh, see, when we talk of uh, CFO services, you no, know, I I told you many of such services which are not related to audit, right? So I'm I'm not sure what is the intent, but uh, but how. audit trail would affect our services i don't uh, see any relationship between them unless i misunderstood the question yeah the audit trail the recent amendment in the ca the accounts also saying like if you are rectifying lot of things okay 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 got it got it got it see uh, we have to na set up process with the client that's most important so if suppose until march 2023 you have seen the clients you know raising the invoice and reversing the invoices you have seen you know they passing entries mostly at the year end and they've been passing a lot of adjustment entries etc now they need to have a process as cfo we should advise them that they need to have a certain process of regularly passing the entries on a timely basis if there are entries you know which were wrong and were posted earlier is not the way that we should go about you know deleting the entries and and then passing another entry this this uh, uh you know kind of uh, uh what do you say uh, kind of uh, sorry I'm, i'm i'm short of word discipline is required you know that that can come through chartered accountants uh, who are advising as cfos that you know what we were doing earlier the things are changing now everybody is looking at us whether regulators from gst and uh, companies act and income tax etc we are going to be you know providing those discipline in the clients working and that's what we should do so to answer uh, sir's question uh, of course you know we need as cfo advisors we need to put discipline we need to put uh, 
the processes, the policies and procedure, how they should go about recording the transactions and maintaining records, etc. That's very important. Right. Now the CFO function will not be aligned with the bank calculation. <laughs> I think uh, any more questions?